Karabo Songo from Olive Communications, welcome to you. You're going to share some thoughts with us today on media and platform innovation in the informal market. Where is the potential here? Thank you very much, Jeremy, for welcoming me. Um, there's, a, there's a massive amount of potential for media to really help with where FMCG companies and other types of companies could actually uh, have revenue potential within the informal market. I think at the rapid pace of technology and just internet access, the big question becomes how do we then unravel the many opportunities that exist within Spaza, stock shops, and all these informal retailers? How do we make sure that we make them part of this big data wave by either creating platforms that are brand owned or either allowing companies that already have the existing platform and helping them access the market through the support of brand. How, how much work do brands actually have to do themselves in this respect? I would suggest to you that they are happy, they are satisfied in the more, uh, in, perhaps in the, in, in the safer, less risky retail market, but they, they are concerned about the informal market. How do you change the mindset in that respect? I think the mindset itself, um, it's a matter of, getting over the element of being afraid to actually attempt to get it right. I think a number of brands are doing a lot of work to try and get that specific market right. But I think some brands are getting it right, some brands are getting it wrong. And I think it's up to a management team to really untake the long-term journey of getting it correct. Uh, across the, the, the nation. If uh, we could talk about some examples in just a moment, but one of the other concerns that many people would have is that brands themselves tend to homogenize this market. They talk about this great thing called the informal market. You're going to tell me that uh, region by region, suburb by suburb, township by township, sector by sector within a township, uh, this market is incredibly nuanced, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think some go as far as to say there's a billion rand economies existing within some townships. Yeah. Uh, and I think the most exciting part is really understanding where the sales come from, where the challenges come from, where the competitive activity comes from. I think routing unto itself can be um, broken down into many different zones. Um, and as we see the whole income and the creation of this big middle income class, who still many of them actually exist in the, within the township market uh, and stay there and buy properties then and, and feed their income into that specific market, creating some buying power, uh, it becomes quite important for brands to then break down and understand really where the activity is and what the opportunity is for each and every individual category. All right, uh, Karabo Songo, let's talk then about that opportunity. Let's assume you have a liquor brand, an FMCG brand. Let's assume we are working in a Shabin or a Spaza shop. Uh, give us some practical articulation of your thinking and how it could work in terms of reaching that consumer. In terms of reaching that consumer, there's a very interesting media um, that's called ActiveCom Media uh, that's been recently launched. It is powered by a narrow casting uh, digital media platform. What that essentially means is that you could literally uh, control each and every individual sc screen on its own profile, meaning that if you have a consumer sitting within a Shebin or a, or a, or, or a tavern itself, they could SMS or enter a promotion that's presented to them on a specific screen, um, get a, a, a unique code back on their phone if they've, they're lucky enough to win, and then walk up to the till and claim a prize as the form of stock. Now, these particular type of solutions are not necessarily promotional driven, they're just tr strong trade marketing tools, and that is just one example. What you're doing is you're engendering brand loyalty within a popular spot, but more importantly, I would suggest you're also building a very enviable database for the brand itself. Absolutely. And I think one of the other challenges that uh, major corporations have is you have what, what you call your star players within a, a stable. So these are big brands with big budgets. But what you also have is a number of other products who necessarily do not have the budget to go above the line. And what some of these mediums then begin to present is an ability to tell the brand story and really engage the consumer quite consistently at a relatively lower cost. Just 
just a final question to you, and very briefly, you also say that brands themselves have a responsibility to protect and nurture smaller retailers, in other words, Shabins and Spaza shops. To what extent? I think to what extent is, a, is, a, is it's definitely will be by, by each and every individual organization based on their spend and their opportunity and their, strate their strategic advantage going into a specific marketplace. But the most important thing is that these smaller retailers have spent years building relationships with consumers in their environment. Um, I often refer to spazas that have been around for more than 15 years on one street. Uh, these retailers have built immense relationships with people whom they even are even willing to actually offer them some form of informal credit. Now, what brands have to think about is do they really want to lose that kind of connection and filter all the consumers back to major retailers who don't have that kind of relationship? with the ultimate consumer. All about relationships. So from Olive Absolutely. Communications, Karabo Songo, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.